A farmer lives on a small plot of land next to a river. One day he travels across the river in a small boat and purchases a fox, a chicken and a bag of corn from a feed and supply store. When the farmer returns to his boat to cross the river again and go home, he realizes he has a problem. The farmer can only take one item in his small boat at a time, otherwise he risks capsizing. He cannot leave the fox alone with the chicken because the fox will eat the chicken. He cannot leave the chicken alone with the corn because the chicken will eat the corn. How does farmer will cross the river without losing anything? A farmer lives on a small plot of land next to a river. One day he travels across the river in a small boat and purchases a fox, a chicken and a bag of corn from a feed and supply store. When the farmer returns to his boat to cross the river again and go home, he realizes he has a problem. The farmer can only take one item in his small boat at a time, otherwise he risks capsizing. He cannot leave the fox alone with the chicken because the fox will eat the chicken. He cannot leave the chicken alone with the corn because the chicken will eat the corn. How does farmer will cross the river without losing anything? First, the farmer must take the chicken across the river leaving the fox and corn alone together on the starting side. This is a good move because fox will not eat corn. Then the farmer goes back and gets the fox. When he takes the fox across the river to the other side, instead of leaving the fox alone with the chicken, he swaps them out and takes the chicken back to the starting side. In the starting side, he then swaps the chicken out for the corn and brings it across, leaving the fox and corn alone on the far side. Finally, he goes back to get the chicken, bringing all three items across the river to the far side without letting anything eat anything else. By following this simple logical approach, farmer brought all three across river without losing anyone. You have three bags with you, one with pink toys only, one with blue toys only and one with a mix of two colors. But the labels on all three bags are wrong. What is the minimum number of draws you would need to make in order to identify all three bags correctly? Let me explain the solution now. And this mislabeled bags puzzle is a very famous interview puzzle. The question is to find out the minimum number of draws to label the bags correctly. Solving this puzzle is not so hard as it looks. If you start with pink or blue bag, you may require more number of draws to identify the correct bags. But we can solve this puzzle in one single step. That is one draw. If you start with the bag labeled pink plus blue. One important thing that you need to remember is that all the bags are labeled incorrectly at present. Now draw from bag which is labeled pink plus blue. There are two probability here. If you found blue toy, remember that bag's current label is pink plus blue which is wrong. So the correct label should be blue as we have got blue from the bag. As we have identified blue bag, move on to bag labeled pink. Remember that bag's current label pink is wrong, hence it should be either blue or pink plus blue. Since we have already identified blue bag, then it should be pink plus blue. Now as we have already identified both blue and pink plus blue bag, the third bag should be pink. Now let's come back to the other probability. If you found the pink toy in pink plus blue bag. Remember that bag's current label is pink plus blue which is wrong. So the correct label should be pink. 
as we have got pink from the bag. As we have identified pink bag, move on to the bag labeled blue. And remember that bag's current label blue is strong, hence it should be either pink or pink plus blue. Since we have already identified pink bag, then it should be pink plus blue. As we have identified both pink and pink plus blue bag, the third bag should be blue. By following these simple steps, we can do the correct labeling of the bag in just one draw. A lady got kidnapped by a gangster. The gangster puts two bullets in consecutive order in an empty six round revolver, spins it, points it at her head and shoots. She is still alive. The gangster then asked her, Do you want me to spin it again and fire or pull the trigger again right away? The question is which option should be preferred? For each option, what is the probability that she will be shot? The most important point here to consider is that the bullets were loaded adjacent to each other. There are six ways to arrange the six round revolver with consecutive bullets. These are the possible scenarios which can be arranged with the two consecutive bullets. But the first shot went blank and hence the last two possibilities are of no use. We can easily eliminate these possibilities. Let me explain this in detail. As per the puzzle, gangster already shot once and it is blank. This implies that in the combinations first value cannot be B, it must be X which is empty. Hence the combination starting with B must be eliminated. So now the four possible arrangements of the consecutive bullets considering the first blank attempt are these. Now looking at these possibilities, our odds of getting shot are 1 by 4 or 25 percent. This is the only combination she will get shot. In all other combinations the immediate one is blank. Since there are four combinations in only one combination she is getting shot it is 1 by 4 or 25 percent of the possibilities where she gets shot. If he re-spins then following are the combinations. As we can see here there are two possibilities out of six combinations where lady will be shot. Looking at these possibilities, our odds of getting shot is 2 by 6 or 33%. So she should prefer pulling the trigger again right away which is 25% possibility of getting shot instead of re-spin which increases to 33% of getting shot. John has three cakes. One cake is poisoned and he knows which one. What is no question can you ask John to find out which cake is poisoned. This is a popular puzzle which requires out of box thinking. Feel free to pause the video and give a try before checking the solution. Once done, continue watching the video for the right answer. Let me explain the solution now. This particular puzzle can have multiple interpretations. Let me explain the solution which I think is the best solution. I have taken this solution from multiple sources and please check the description section for more details. Let's make a couple of assumptions to answer this puzzle. The first one is that we are allowed to cut the cake and second one is that John says the truth only among the two options yes or no. So we have three pieces of cakes. 
say A, B, C. Let us cut the cake C into two equal portions, say C1 and C2. Now put C1 with A and C2 with B. So we have now two segments of cake pieces, that is AC1 and BC2. Now our question to John is, John, is AC1 more poisonous than BC2? If John says yes, that means A is poisoned, throw it out and eat B, C1 and C2. A is poisonous because A is larger in size compared to C1. If John says no, that means two options. First option is AC1 is less poisonous or BC2 is more poisonous. Second option is AC1 and BC2 are equally poisonous. Here it is clear that A is not poisonous. In this case, I suggest we better don't go for any adventures, eat the piece A, leaving B and C for John. In any case, he can't eat both. He would eat only the pure cake and would definitely throw away the poisonous one. Again here, there is no clear guarantee that poisonous cake is identified, but at least this will provide us the logical conclusion. Let me explain another interesting interpretation. According to this interpretation, one question is sufficient to finding a single non-poisonous cake, but one question is insufficient to determine the poisonous cake. Let's A, B and C be a labeling of the cakes. If you only have option to ask one question and can take no other action, there is no such question. A yes, no question gives you one bit of information. You need two bits of information to distinguish the poisonous cake from the non-poisonous cakes. As I have already mentioned, one question is sufficient to finding a single non-poisonous cake. Let the cakes be labeled A, B and C as I have already mentioned. You can then ask the question, is the poisonous cake either A or B? If the answer is yes, then we know that the cake C is non-poisonous. If the answer is no, then you know both cakes A and B are non-poisonous. Note that this question is insufficient to determine the poison cake. If the answer to the question is yes, then all you know is that either A or B is poisonous, but not which one. You would need an additional question to determine that. So there is no single correct answer which can be a solution to this riddle. Do share your answer in the comment section. A horse and a camel were carrying boxes on their backs. The horse started complaining to the camel that his load is too heavy. The camel replied, why are you complaining? If you gave me one of your boxes, I would have double what you have. And if I give you one of my boxes, we too would have an even load. How many boxes do each of the animal, that is horse and camel, is carrying? Let's assume C be the number of boxes that camel is carrying and H be that being carried by a horse. As per first part of camel's statement, that is, if you gave me one of your boxes, I would have double what you have. This can be expressed in the form of equation like this. C plus 1 equals 2 times H minus 1. C plus 1 because as per the statement, if you gave me one of your boxes, which means we need to add 1 to number of boxes that camel is carrying. And 2 times of h minus 1 is because in the same statement it says adding 1 more boxes to c will result in double what horse have. We have to subtract 1 because this equation is valid if 1 box is given to camel. Now solve this equation. After simplification equation becomes c plus 1 equals 2h minus 2 and c equals 2h minus 3 and call this as an equation 1. Now in second part of camel's statement suggests if I give you one of my boxes we too would have an even load. This can be represented as c minus 1 equals h plus 1 and c equals h plus 2.
we know as per the first equation c equals 2h minus 3 now substitute the value of c here equation becomes 2h minus 3 equals h plus 2 after solving h equals 5 again putting the value of h in the equation 1 which gives c equals 2 times 5 minus 3 which is equal to 10 minus 3 and which is equal to 7 that is c equals 7 thus answer to this puzzle is horse is carrying 5 boxes and the camel is carrying 7 boxes